guys, welcome to Clockwork, Dandy Needles to another Clockwork Rewind. This is our ninth Clockwork Rewind now. There are only three more to go before the end of the season, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really hope you've enjoyed this format. It's been fun for me to talk about some shows of the past that I haven't seen in a very long time. Some of them are proving to be just as good as I remember. Some of them, maybe it's rose-tinted glasses when I first watched them, but for this show in particular, I can tell you it's just as good as I remember. It's very exciting to break it down. Welcome to princess jellyfish i can't wait to talk about this anime show with you guys before we get going make sure you guys do subscribe very shortly now we're gonna have the full overview where i look at the anime of next season tell you guys what's coming our way what's continuing what's gonna be new what am i breaking down i've got three shows that i will be breaking down next season so no clockwork rewind next season but i can't wait to discuss the new shows with you guys of course there is the end of season review coming your way very shortly that should be out within three weeks time roughly let's get straight to it first things first we do as we always do princess jellyfish released in 2010 making it 13 years of age now the score is 8.1 my score is 8 for once me and mal agree the show deserves to be in the eights it's a very good show it's an anime that deals with going against the grain of beauty standards it's hilariously fun there is so many great characters within it it does cover cosplay aspects and fashion aspects as well but it's really just coming of age accepting beauty isn't exactly written down like a set of rules nowadays if we were to create a list of lgbt shows that really are allies really support the movement i believe this is a show that needs to be up there being a cross-dresser somebody who enjoys women's clothing there's a lot of really beautiful women's clothing out there i would say if i look at men's clothing I do like suits i think suits are very nice but there's not a lot to it so i do think women do have a lot more variety bar pockets men have a lot more pockets in their clothing this is an anime i really think is a forgotten gem i never hear people talk about the show the open is so contrasty where it's all relaxing talking about jellyfish and her mum's being very nice and happy it's such a happy open the key line is every girl grows up to be a beautiful princess beauty isn't a set of rules and the problem is that society nowadays is too focused on what is the trend what is beautiful what should you be doing instead of do you actually feel happy with yourself are you happy with how you look are you comfortable with you because you are only feeling uncomfortable because there's rules there key important message of the show because the show is trying to tell you that anybody can be beautiful everybody has their own quirks go through the idea of being socially awkward not being able to mix in because we go into the present and we have the girl who's grown up she says i'm sorry i didn't grow up to be a beautiful princess horrible to be in that position thinking i'm not a princess i'm ugly i don't feel happy with myself i don't deserve to be hanging out with the mainstream people i am an outcast what you're going to deal with when it comes to the sisterhood as they call themselves a anime that pushes body positivity you've got a lot of characters who are not stick thin representing every single dress size is a very positive thing that one of the characters is a seamstress and she makes amazing costumes and i can remember the meme she says if you can't sew you may as well just go and die in a hole but i really appreciated that when i couldn't sew back in the day uh, one day i will learn to be great at sewing and here i am 20 days now from representing the uk in sewing it's a show that stuck with me i must have saw this anime when it aired it must have been about 10 years ago when i saw it so different it's got that old style of animation which looks really really nice the op is just as crazy as the anime i have a feeling people only remember the op for what is on the screen easter egg pop culture territory and i love it so let's start with star wars we've got star wars the stormtrooper is wearing a jellyfish on the head and leia is in love with darth vader the cosplay aspect is covered i think nowadays most of us have dress up darling which covers cosplay this is like the og which covered cosplay and making fashion stuff very forgotten animes that slipped through the cracks a very long time ago now we're going into the singing in the rain easter egg which i think is beautiful the mc is happy singing in time with the vocals which is really nice the vocals are very upbeat it's a very positive open we go into mary poppins we go into a bit of james bond into kill bill we then finally go with our mc opening her eyes and being in bed which is quite nice because it's a, such a nice chill relaxed open this is your weekly anime are you happy i hope you're happy i hope you're having a great day type thing i think most people do just remember their pop culture references on this one though but it is great but the anime does quite quickly start deep diving into the idea of beauty what 
is beauty because the MC's mother believed that everybody grows up beautiful, but the MC doesn't feel beautiful. She's too scared to go into Akahabra because she really wants to go and see the jellyfish, but she can't. She can't even bring herself to it. She does actually say that I had a tightening of the chest, which is that panic attack, that anxiety attack. I can't do this. I've got to turn around. She does manage to get some bits for her friends, which I think is really amazing statement to her even though i'm terrified i'm gonna get you guys something because you're my friends and i want to make sure that you've got something that is interesting to you. So every single sister in the sisterhood has something and every single one of those sisters have a quirk or a unique interest this wouldn't fit society's idea of a normal type thing i am with them i sew i'm a seamstress i enjoy sewing i make costumes i guess my ideals wouldn't also fit as somebody who also doesn't quite fit what society deems as pretty i also really appreciate the anime for making an effort to cover different body shapes and stuff this is an anime where we have a dead mummy which is quite sad so obviously whenever we are talking about her she's no more which is why you really feel for her because she's not really grown up with a mother to say actually you are beautiful she's no longer around to confirm it you are beautiful you are you this character is going to have to develop that confidence on their own thankfully they're going to meet the right person that's going to help them i do like the sisterhood and how crazy it is crazy introduction to how quirky absolutely everybody is you've got the one who's obsessed with the three kingdoms your otaku kind of status of three kingdom stuff collecting all the gachas you've got the one who sews you've got the one interested in trains i have a train friend so to me this is normal this is fine i don't find this weird or anything the one who likes art doesn't really find herself very pretty or anything she's very pretty and you're gonna have to wait for the show to prove that she's very pretty we've also got hidden mysterious tenant you don't get to see her but she writes boy love comics they sell worldwide so she's worldwide with the comics but she's nocturnal doesn't go out and they communicate with her via messages via the door you're like will we ever see her will we not ever see her i don't remember seeing her in the show but i could be completely wrong maybe it was something so mundane that she actually looks quite normal that i was like oh, okay cool we've obviously got this phobia too with talking to the opposite gender as we find out a bit later on from our little chibi clara clara is absolutely gorgeous i love her she's so cute the top question you avoid asking anybody in the sisterhood are you a virgin we just don't go there there's no point asking that question it's the number one taboo topic no male tenant thing is very important for later on let's go into the jellyfish segment kura actually does go out at night because she feels a bit safer because there's less people around a pet shop jellyfish called clara now what i did learn i think it might have been thanks to this show is that jellyfish are very hard to keep don't just go and get them because you think it's fun if you don't keep them in the correct settings and i think they've got to have io water so you can't just put tap water in they've got to have special water they can actually turn inside out they're very hard to keep and as we learn in the show you can't just throw different jellyfish together and hope for the best we have two types of jellyfish now being mixed because this shop doesn't really seem to know their stuff they've got two jellyfish one of these is poisonous to the other one they're not in the big enough tank to be kept together one's going to poison the other one which of course is where the plot starts to push a little bit this is where we're going to start getting some forward motion in our plot socially awkward kura who needs to make an action because she knows you can't keep these jellyfish together you have to do something different so she needs to act however the shopkeeper is male the shopkeeper is also what she describes as a hipster everybody is too busy presuming things about each other because she's also not in the clear here she does actually make a presumption about the guy and she doesn't want to talk to him because she presumes he's a hipster i don't want to talk to him i don't know how to talk to him but it is of course a lot of that social anxiety coming in i can't talk to you i don't know how to approach you very awkward conversation which i want to say kudos for trying to talk however it comes out like verbal diarrhea obviously she's talking very very fast because she's nervous she's also just spewing out a lot of random facts about jellyfish which is good because you know your stuff but it comes out so quick the guy thinks she's trying to break in she tries to get a wedge herself between the door and it results in him kicking her which is a very drastic action thankfully we've got our very beautiful savior coming along star figure of koibuchi coming to the rescue i love koibuchi because of how confident koibuchi is when approaching the man in the shop why are you kicking random girls you don't kick people you notice that kura feels a bit more confident being able to say actually this is what i'm doing actually by the way that jellyfish is going to die if you keep that jellyfish in that container it actually spurs the plot into motion again where koibuchi says okay fine we'll take the jellyfish we're going to take it off your hands it's going to die anyway so you may as well give it to us and koibuchi pays that gets that and that also allows our two characters to end up at the sisterhood together overload of a night for a socially awkward good character but we do get to see clara is safe obviously taking up the bathtub for a little bit till they can get a tank in the morning 
nice to see the anime taking a bit of interest in jellyfish because sometimes you'll see a show doesn't really know a lot about say fish or aquatic but it will be about aquatics i like the fact that this show does get it right it doesn't make it out that everybody should go and get a jellyfish they're very hard to keep i wouldn't really recommend keeping them the ro water itself costs a fair bit of money to get hold of a very fast-paced night with koibuchi in the room admiring the artwork the artwork is really good i think her art is beautiful then falling asleep on the floor so it's a very fast night for somebody who doesn't hang out with people suddenly having a complete stranger on the floor and then standing on the wig and going oh okay it's a wig girls wear wigs all the time it's fine then realizing that our stranger is topless and is a boy the pronouns he because he even says i'm a boy we can probably use they as well but i'm pretty sure kubuchi refers to himself as male kubuchi looks absolutely stunning especially later on there's an even better outfit when he wears the dress looks absolutely amazing and then he goes into the makeup section where he's like, oh, can I have some makeup remover? I feel really gross. And obviously that ends up having that moment where you've got panic written over her face because one of the rules of the sisterhood is not to have a man in the room or anything. And obviously now there's a man in the room. Dear mum, there are manly princesses in Tokyo. I love it. I really like it. It's such a great open. It's a very fun introduction to the world of Princess Jellyfish. A lot of characters making assumptions. Even the sisterhood does it. They don't want to be associated with men. There's a lot of assumptions made about anybody, basically. I'm an outcast from you. And that automatically gives you a segment because you saying you're an outcast creates a group. It segments you off from other people. Kobuchi is pretty chill, but he does make an assumption that she's going to have makeup where she doesn't. That's when we have the assumption of virginity and stuff coming into it. It's a really fun anime that does start deep diving world topics that I think are really relevant to nowadays. I really think more people should enjoy the anime because the anime is amazing. It's fun. There's a lot of really powerful moments. There's a lot of empowering moments. Kobuchi tries to empower a girl to make her realize that you are actually beautiful pretty sure he tries to help her do makeup and she looks really really good it's a show all about empowerment trying to make you feel good about you because kura obviously doesn't feel confident about herself a bit later on when Kobuchi does try to make her feel better initially she's uncomfortable having too much makeup but then he finds a middle ground and it works but it's a show that I think really deserves a bit more love I definitely recommend it to people I do think it deserves the eight I'm very glad that I got to break it down with you guys because I couldn't quite remember some of the details but now I've gone back to it I'm like I 100% remember how this happened it's a very short anime there's only 11 episodes not much to really get your teeth into I think it's a really good in and out job it doesn't overstay it's welcome it covers what it needs to do and I definitely recommend it for you guys if you're in a quite a good place it's good to just chill out with because it will make you smile it will make you feel better at the end of the day so thank you guys so much and make sure that you are comfortable being yourselves it's a very key important thing life is too short to be unhappy and if you're harming absolutely no one continue doing what you do and make yourself happy thank you guys so much i really thank you for your support this has been an amazing series to go through take care of yourselves guys Bye bye